Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, dear viewers, to another live episode of Gems of the Heart. And I'm your host for the program, Junaid Da. Dear viewers, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uniting us again to talk about his beautiful deen. And I'd also like to thank all of the viewers for their continual support for engaging with us here on Huda TV, especially on this program, Gems of the Heart, where we have an interactive session uh, and you contribute through Facebook and on our tutorials as well. We have all of your responses to our questions from last week and we have also uh, the winner of the week or the student that's been working very hard answering our questions as well. So I'd like to thank all of you for your participation. Uh, Dear viewers, we have a very special program today for two reasons. We're going to be talking about Ramadan, not just Ramadan in general, but how we can guide our hearts or prepare our hearts to receive Ramadan in the best possible manner. Now, two reasons why. First and foremost, because Ramadan is just roughly around about 25 days away, so that's not far at all. Secondly, sadly, this is the last live episode of Gems of the Heart until after Ramadan. Uh, so we're going to dedicate this episode talking about Ramadan and how we can prepare ourselves for that. Dear viewers, how many times is it that we have entered upon our prayer and we find it difficult to concentrate? How many times is it that we find our Iman, our faith, low outside of the month of Ramadan? Do you think it is because we jump from one thing to another thing without any preparation? Do you think we're on the phone and as soon as we finish our phone call, we jump straight into our prayer, not concentrating as we should? Or going from the month of Shaban, going into the month of Ramadan without any serious preparation. We have high aspirations, we have high goals, but many of those unfortunately are just impulses or feelings. But inshallah ta'ala, today we want to try to make a plan a permanent change in our lives where we can get better, increase our Iman and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the objective of our program today. Not just that, but dear viewers also, it's important to change our mentality when it comes to doing good deeds. We should race with one another to be the best. If you look at the lives of the companions, you will find Abu Bakr, you will find Umar, may Allah have mercy on both of them, racing to do good deeds with one another. Any opportunity they find to do some good, they will see it as a door to paradise and they will race to do so. And that should be our mentality, especially when it comes to the month of Ramadan. So much so that Umar himself even admitted that whenever he tried to outdo Abu Bakr in any good deed, Abu Bakr would always be there and always uh, be ahead. So much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, he said in a beautiful verse, That in that, doing the good deeds, people race with one another. They don't leave any good for anyone else to find. So this is our mentality for the program. We want to change that and be those who race for good deeds. Dear viewers, when we come back from our break, we are going to be opening the phone calls. So we will give you the opportunity to call us and answer the question as well. The question from last week still stands. We asked uh, in which verse of the Quran did the Prophet wasallam say that the believers will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question still stands. We will open the phone lines after the break. So let us begin our program by welcoming our Sheikh and then we can go straight into our questions. In the studio we have with us Sheikh Ibrahim Zidane. I'd like to welcome you Sheikh to, to the program. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh. Okay Sheikh, we are just uh, 25 days roughly away from Ramadan. It's so fast. I remember talking to you previously and we were still like a couple of months away. So time flies so fast. Right. SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wassalamu rasulullah. Uh, this is how life is and it's all a lesson for us that anything that comes comes very fast that's why the day of judgment will come very fast death comes very fast and Ramadan after Ramadan our life is basically how many Ramadans we witness that's why the early generations of Islam when they understood the reality and the magnitude of the reward in Ramadan they would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for six months before Ramadan for them just to witness the month of Ramadan and for them to be helped in the month of Ramadan with acts of worship to get the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After that, they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for acceptance. So it's a great reward. And really, the loss is the loss in Ramadan. And that's why it's, alhamdulillah, an opportunity that we have time before Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us life to witness the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. But what are we doing now? Are we preparing ourselves and our hearts for the month of Ramadan? Or are we in ghafla, in forgetfulness and heedlessness that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that in Sha'ban, specifically in Sha'ban, in the month of Sha'ban, 
This is a month where people are forgetful. He okay. said that, alayhi salatu wasalam. That's why he used to fast a lot in the month of Sha'ban. He said, when he was asked about this, he, th he said, ذاك شهر يغفلوا الناس عنه. This is a month that people are forgetful about this month between Rajab and Ramadan. And it's a month where the deeds are being presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, and I like for my deeds to be presented while I'm fasting. Mm -hmm. So there's some serious work to be done with our hearts and physically to get ourselves into the month of Ramadan in the best way, inshallah. Okay. Uh, Sheikh, generally speaking, why should a person prepare for something? Uh, someone said Ramadan is coming. When it comes, we will do the things that we need. What's the benefit of preparing? No. Uh, if we give an example in our worldly life, if you have a guest coming, and not just any guest, but someone would come with millions and millions of dollars for you, okay. for <laughs> free like this, and all kinds of good things, and then after that he would leave. But he comes with certain conditions. You know, he has to give you these things if you fulfill certain things for you to do. How would you prepare yourself? Or a, a person that is a merchant, all of his year, his, his profit, he has to have his store opened, and his profit is one, but in that one particular month, it's millions of times multiplied. Okay. But with the condition that the whole year he has to be working. His whole entire year will be waiting for that you know, time to come. So if we have the reality of what the rewards of the month of Ramadan, and that's part of preparation to the month of Ramadan, okay. what's the rewards of fasting? And this is an obligatory act, one of the pillars of Islam and the deeds done in Ramadan. If a person has this reality and hearts attached to the hereafter, uh, we would do whatever it takes to prepare our hearts and ourselves for the month of Ramadan to compete, to be the first, and okay. to get the best in the month of Ramadan. Okay, excellent. Uh, Sheikh, uh, talking about preparation, so what is the difference between a believer that will enter Ramadan prepared or a believer that goes in without any preparation? No, it's a big difference because deeds, and that's the importance of the heart if we're specifically talking about the hearts, okay. the difference between two people that are physically doing the same act. Many Muslims, they fast. Even sometimes people that don't even pray, and they would fast in the month of Ramadan. Okay. So you have two individuals, two people that are both fasting, literally fasting from Fajr to Maghrib, but the rewards is something like between the heavens and the earth when it comes to the rewards. Based on what? They're physically doing the same thing, based on what's in their hearts. Okay. And that's why we have to be careful of what's in our hearts, sincerity, devotion, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, and to purify ourselves from sin, and the levels of fasting, the, the least or the lowest level of fasting is physically fasting. Okay. Let's everybody do this. But there's higher levels than this. Fasting away from sins, to stay away from disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the higher level, and that is to fast, as the ulama, they say, from anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be focused so much that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that we seek his pleasure and we seek his re the rewards from him and so on. And the Prophet sallam, to show the importance of Ramadan when two brothers, one died a year later after his brother. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a year, uh, yes, later. And one died as a martyr, the one that died earlier, he died in the battlefield as a shaheed, as a martyr. Okay. And then his brother died after a year, uh, you know, on his bed. And one of the companions saw in his dreams that uh, the one that died later, he entered Jannah before the one that died earlier, although the earlier one is a martyr. So he was okay. surprised and he went to the Prophet Sallam, why would the martyr enter Jannah later when he's a martyr? And the Prophet Sallam replied by saying, didn't he fast the month of Ramadan? Didn't he pray such and such amount of salah, number of salah? So they were competing and this shows the virtues. One more Ramadan in one's life, can be a matter of success and, and, and everlasting reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not something to be belittled. A Ramadan in our life is a great thing for the rewards. SubhanAllah, that, that last Ramadan could be the very key for you to enter into paradise. Right. No. Okay. Uh, Sheikh, I also want to talk about uh, the mentality that we should, before we put out a plan and how we can prepare, but the mentality of a Muslim, mm. especially when we look um, at the companions, how do we race and compete with one another to do good deeds? Um, no. How can we be in the same footsteps? Right. Uh, we need to do two things basically. One thing is what's in the heart, and that doesn't need physical actions, but we need to be focused and to have the hearts present in what we're about to face. And the second thing is the physical actions that would lead to our purification of our hearts. Okay. So first, you know, again, if something that is so important to you coming, you prepare yourself for it. Something major is going to happen, 
You don't just neglect it till it happens. You have to prepare yourself mentally for it. So we need to be mentally prepared for Ramadan. Uh, increasing our iman, repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing the virtues of Ramadan, work to be done. Okay. What are the virtues of Ramadan? What is awaiting for us in the month of Ramadan to gain for rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The hereafter, uh, knowing the rewards and hereafter and what's coming ahead and so on. Uh, the second thing is to be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay. and to be pleased with the religion of Islam and to prepare our hearts for the devotion that is needed in Ramadan. Uh, and honestly speaking, and many people hide this. Okay. Some people, they don't like Ramadan. Some Muslims, they don't like Ramadan, even if they're not saying it you know, out loud, but they don't like Ramadan. Why? Because it's a month of suffering to them. There's no eating and drinking, and there's no fun during the day, so especially the summertime and so on. If a person sees in himself that he has this, this is a time to uh, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to purify ourselves. Physically, no one, no human being whatsoever would like to be uh, hungry or thirsty. This is against our nature as human beings. But do the believers enjoy fasting? Yes. It's not the physical enjoyment of thirst and hunger. It's the enjoyment of the heart. SubhanAllah. That you are a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what we need to focus on. That if the order comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're a slave of Allah, and you do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will enjoy this. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, As-sawmu li wa najzibih. Fasting is for me, and I would reward for it. This for me uh, statement is sufficient for the believers. That this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he's the one that rewards for it. And he said, alayhi salatu wa sallam, that the fasting person has two moments of joy. The, mo the first one, when he breaks his fast, and the second moment is when he meets and the liqa'i rabbi, when he meets his Lord, oh. subhanahu wa ta'ala. The believers, they're occupied with this because they're pleased with Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they will be fasting, suffering physically, yes, hungry physically, yes, but there's a level of joy in their hearts that make them witness how they are servants of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in need of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and Shaykh, is it correct that uh, uh, on the Day of Judgment, when the believers will enter into paradise, that there's a special gate or a special door for the, those who have been fasting? Right, they will be called from a special gate which is called ar okay. And the word ar comes from ar which is water and being full with drinking and so on. So the reward is given from the same sort of deed that they used to do. And there's verses in the Quran where it will be said to the believers when they're entering Jannah, كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا هَنِيئًا بِمَا أَسْلَفْتُمْ فِي الْأَيَامِ الْخَالِيَةِ Eat and drink because of what you used to do before. It was said for the fasting people. Nothing will be wasted. When people are thirsty then, in the Day of Judgment, the believers, the fasting ones, they won't be then suffering from, from thirst because they already did that in this life. And it's easy, it's simple. It's nothing compared to what's going to happen in the Day of Judgment. Uh, uh, also, Sheikh, uh, uh, the best moment as, as it is described for a fasting person, the moment is the moment of iftar. Mm -hmm. And the moment person opens his fast. Why is that moment so sweet? Uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that as we heard. Okay. And that's why if it's done for the sake of Allah, uh, it, you know, a person would find the sweetness of al-Iman, that he did something for the sake of Allah. Fasting is one of the acts of worship that a person cannot really show off fasting because you're not doing anything. Okay. You can look at fasting, let's to make it easy for our hearts too. Some people see fasting as a very difficult act of worship. Okay. You can look at it from a different perspective that this is one of the easiest acts of worship. You're not doing anything. <laughs> You're just staying away from eating and drinking, right. which is the easiest as far as actions are concerned. So when the person is abstaining from the desires and eating and drinking and so on, a uh, uh, human being, they don't really enjoy their food and their enjoyment unless they have some form of depriving themselves from it. Right. So no one would ever taste the sweetness of even food like a fasting person Small. at the moment of breaking the fast. And it's ayat, it's signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, it brings the gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, a person is busy not being grateful to Allah. So when we taste the, the taste of hunger, and then we're given the opportunity to eat, a person becomes grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart and in his tongue. It changes, it by itself is a life-changing month. If we really put the effort for 30 days or so, Right, this can transform our life completely to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. The whole entire ummah of Muslims, we see the situation of the Muslims today. Right. Something like the month of Ramadan, if the ummah of the Prophet fast the month of Ramadan in the right way, 
that can change the entire situation of this ummah. SubhanAllah. Beautiful. Uh, also, Sheikh, on that note, when we're talking about uh, opening our fast, I think everybody would agree that when you open your fast and you take that first sip of water, you can feel it going right down your throat into your chest. And you can't help but thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that point. No. It's amazing. And, and that's why we're also referring to what's, what should be in our hearts. We need to think and analyze what we do for fasting. Right? Uh, we should not just be doing things because whatever people are doing. You know, think, give it more thoughtful uh, you know, moments in your life before we break our fast and everybody's waiting. We wait for that moment to come. Okay. Why is that? Because we're servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why not a minute before breaking the fast we can just eat and drink? You no, know, it's a very specific matter and that's why we observe this very diligently. We should take that and do the same thing with everything else in matters of the religion. There are mm -hmm. limits for us, right? So why can't we, and that's what the training of fasting would do to us and, and changes our life, that we have limits that we should not transgress. The same thing we do in fasting, Fajr time, Maghrib time. Uh, the meal that people would sit uh, with each other and eat suhoor before Fajr. Right. This is something that the Prophet ﷺ said and ordered us to make suhoor. Tasahharu fa inna fi barakah. Uh, eat suhoor, this meal before Fajr, because it has barakah in it, okay. has blessings in it. Right. Uh, the, the night is short, the, the day is long, it's a lot of struggle. But again, what's wrong with struggling for a month? What's the big deal of struggling and going against our desires and so on? Mm -hmm. Is it something bad? It's, it's okay. It's only for 30 days. Subhanallah. It's not the whole entire year. So preparing our hearts for this and giving strength to our heart, that yes, we're about to start the month of Ramadan, 30 days, uh, as if you have no share for yourself whatsoever. No desires for you for a whole month. What's wrong with that? I'll be willing to do that for the sake of Allah. And then wait for the day of Eid. Uh, and also, Shaykh Allah is so merciful that when we look at the rulings of fasting, we find Allah ordering us to delay our suhoor to, to the last moment and to open our fast in the first moments, in the early moments. Right. So you can see the mercy of Allah. Right, subhanAllah. Yeah. But we need the, the preparation for this before the month of Ramadan is important. Okay. Right. So, Sheikh, let's start this preparation. I have some ideas in front of me, so maybe you can expand on those. Uh, the first thing that we can do to prepare uh, for Ramadan, just like you mentioned in visiting, or if a guest is going to visit you, most likely what will you do? Will You will clean your house, prepare your house, so the guest can come in and reside comfortably. Uh, how can we use this example as Muslims receiving Ramadan? This is a very nice example, because if this guest, guest is going to come to your home, and if he finds the house is very, very dirty and very clean, and smells bad. He won't stay there long. Sure. He wants to leave, right? So you would make sure that it's perfectly clean. The same thing when Ramadan comes, we need to be clean so that we enjoy the month of Ramadan. And cleaning ourselves, cleaning sometimes takes a lot of effort to clean. Nobody likes to clean as far as the action is done. Right. We like cleanliness, but to uh, do the act of cleaning, especially if something that is impure, people don't like to clean what is impure. Right. But we have to do it because the outcome of it is good. So the impurities of the heart, sins, and associating uh, our, attaching our hearts to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the time to clean our hearts by repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what many of the ulama, they say, before a season of good deeds and, and ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most important thing is to repent okay. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all sins and have good expectations of Allah. Don't think that you can't live without your sins. Sins are bad and impure and, and filthy. Leave it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be there for you to help you, to support you. And so, so repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. And also, we need to follow the way of the Prophet ﷺ, what he used to do in the month of Shaban to the best of our ability. Right, okay. We all complain that in the beginning of the month of Ramadan, we get so tired in the first few days because we're not used to fast. Fast before the month of Ramadan so that once Ramadan comes, you're ready, prepared for it. Some people think that in the month of Sha'ban we should eat as much as we can. Right, okay. Because now it's the last time, <laughs> you know, things like this. No, it's the total opposite. Mm. You know, if you want to prepare yourself for a deed, do the same deed. Okay. That's why the Prophet ﷺ used to fast a lot in Sha'ban. And the same thing which is important for uh, the sisters. For the sisters, those who have days that left, they did not fast because of menses and giving birth and so on. This is the opportunity for them to make up these days before the month of Ramadan, uh, if they have the ability to do so. Excellent. So, number one, cleaning our house, and that includes Tawbah, 
being, uh, being aware of your, of your sins. Uh, secondly, Sheikh, what about the role of one's intention? Hmm. Uh, we know that the Prophet ﷺ told that every action is done by intention. What is the role of it here? Uh, intentions or ikhlas is one of the pillars of fasting. Okay. Uh, because if you have two people that are not eating and drinking, uh, they're not necessarily fasting unless a person is doing it with intention that he's doing that as an act of worship for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing the ibadah of fasting okay. not someone that is on a diet for example so that's why the intention is there is so important and it's sincerely done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay. so preparing ourselves with with having sincerity and intentions in these days in our actions in our salah in our dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance in fasting also uh, so that the intentions are there and the sincerity is there and that's why it's easy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy for the believers that fasting is one of the acts of worship that is so easy to be sincere because nobody is seeing you fasting because right. you're not doing anything okay. so it's easy to be sincere you can hide and eat nobody would know anything about you so that's why it's, a, it's, a, it's an evidence against our own self that we can really be sincere. Okay. And we can see that clearly in our actions. Shaykh, so can we also share our intentions? Uh, meaning that uh, uh, my intention to fast is for the worship of Allah. But at the same time, I also want to lose some weight and uh, look nice. Can I share my intention? No, we shouldn't. Okay. That should not be ever an intention to fast. It's a solely, purely ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If these other things comes with it, mashallah, this is good. And that's the blessings, the barakah of ibadah, many things comes with it. But the intention, your heart seeking only the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay. and nothing physical whatsoever from worldly gains or anything like this. Okay, uh, inshallah, uh, Shaykh, on that, uh, we will take a short break. And then when we come back, we'll continue looking at the steps that we can take in this blessed month to prepare ourselves yeah. for, for Ramadan. Uh, dear viewers, we're going to take a very short break here and then when we come back we will open the phone line so you can call us and answer our question which is in which verse did uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or did the Prophet ﷺ tell us that we the believers will see Allah in paradise. So the question is open, let's take a short break and then when we come back we'll continue with our program. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers, after a very short break here. Joining us live on our special episode of Gems of the Heart. Uh, dear viewers, the phone lines now are open, so you can call us, give us your questions, your comments, and even your answers to our question. I'll repeat the question, and that is, in which verse of the Quran did the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, tell us that the believers will see Allah in paradise? So the phone lines are now open. Let's see who's the first person to call us and walk away with the title of winner of the week. Let's get back to our discussion, Sheikh. Uh, we've put some ideas now, some plans on how we can prepare for Ramadan. We talked about the intention. We talked about also um, other aspects of preparation. Uh, Sheikh, what would you say uh, is the importance of learning the rules of fasting? Now, learning the rules of fasting is part of exalting the orders of Allah. If you have and if you, you're about to witness something important in your life, uh, if you don't learn how, how to do it, that's a sign that you belittle it. Like if you go to a job and this job will pay you a lot of money okay. and you don't really care of what you need to do there. You just go and you show up and you just sit and relax and, and wait for things to happen. People will see that you belittle your job and there's nothing more beautiful than the deen of Islam. Okay. So we need to know the rulings to make sure that we fast in the right way. And we need to know, and that's affect our hearts. It's what's, what's done in the heart here is that a person would uh, show that respect and that he honor what Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do something so your heart is focused on this. How can I fulfill it in the most perfect way? Okay. So that by itself is a purification process to the heart, exalting what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, ordered us to do. The same thing with the salah, the same thing with zakah. Someone has money and he know that he might be someone that has to give zakah, but he doesn't really care. It's a bad sign, not just the physical action of it, but there's a disaster in his heart. Okay. If he doesn't really pay attention that he is supposed to uh, do something about this matter. So uh, knowing the rulings, uh, and that would needs the effort to be taken and for a person to know, to learn about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us is affecting our hearts and affect the fast, of course. Okay, and Sheikh, would you recommend any particular books or any particular articles that we can read just for the basics, knowing the, the, the rulings of fasting? There are many, alhamdulillah, and uh, you know, something like the fiqh made easy, fiqh al or something okay. of that nature. 
uh, asking the people of knowledge is important and people would whatever localities they're in they should ask the ones that they trust the knowledge and the religion go to the masjid uh, usually one of the things that the early generations of Islam used to do and the ulama till today they do that before the month of Ramadan you would find in the masjid lectures or durus about uh, how to fast okay. so if this is present in whatever a person is in uh, as a way to show the importance of it is to go learn these rulings of course okay excellent uh, uh, Sheikh, also, when we talk about the rules of fasting, um, there are many things that one needs to understand. And you mentioned this in the beginning about the menstruating women, for example. Uh, is fasting obligatory on them, or are they allowed to not fast? Certain individuals' fasting is not obligatory on them, one of which a woman in her menses or having the afterbirth bleeding. Okay. Uh, she is forbidden from fasting, actually. Fasting becomes forbidden for her. And she has to make up the days later. And since we mentioned this, I remember we talked about that evidence before. But it's since we're reflecting more on on the hard aspect of things, a woman came and asked Aisha radiallahu uh, anha why women in Islam basically she's saying that whenever we have the menses, we're ordered to make up the fast, but we're not ordered to make up the salah. Right. So uh, Aisha radiallahu anha did not talk to her about the wisdom behind this. She told her, Aharuriya Anti, are you from the Khawarij, from these deviant sects? And then she said to her, we used to be ordered to make up the days of fasting and not ordered to make up the days of Salah. Right. Uh, this level of submission, totally submitting oneself to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the concern in the heart, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Not that, what's the wisdom of fasting? Will I get benefit in this life from fasting, like the issue of losing weight, for example? or sharing with the poor, and all of these types of things. These are wisdom behind things, yes. But this is not why we fast. We fast because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to fast, and we know that for sure. And we need to pay attention to when you look at other ways of life, other religions. They do acts of worship, of course, there's no true religion except the religion of Islam. When you see how they do things, they have no idea that this is what Allah ordered them. This is their leaders ordered them to do this, and they do it. They have no evidence whatsoever that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see in the beauty in the deen of Islam, everything is so clear. The Prophet وسلم, uh, fasted, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran ordered us very clear instructions how to fast and what's the rulings of fasting. This is a great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he show us how to worship him in the most perfect way. Okay, excellent. Uh, uh, Shaykh, also I want to look at uh, another possible way that we can prepare ourselves in the month of um, uh, Shaban is by connecting our family ties. Uh, we may have grudges and feelings against our loved ones, sometimes even unfortunately our mothers or fathers, we don't talk to them or they don't talk to us. Um, how important is it that we connect all these ties before entering Ramadan? If a person is sincere, that he wants sins to be forgiven, wants to get the rewards in Ramadan and so on, the matter is unseen to us. And one of the things that the Prophet ﷺ said, which is very, very important in the month of Sha'ban, he said that this is a month where the deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The yearly deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Sha'ban. So we need to be the best at this time. And this is one of the means for the sins to be forgiven. Another hadith, which is a Hassan hadith, it's an authentic hadith, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the middle of Sha'ban, he forgives all of his creation except two types of people. Okay. The mushrik, the one that associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and al mushahin the one that has quarrelsome with others, dis in dispute with others, he would not have his sins forgiven. So this is now a test for us. Are we going to be uh, uh, preferring our pride or stepping over our pride and uh, seek rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So we need to check who are the ones that we are in dispute with. And we need to fix this before the middle of Sha'ban. Okay. We need to take what it, what it takes, really. Right? And if it's all worldly things, and most of it, it's because of some worldly gains here or there, who cares about all of these things? You know, bringing the peace for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of them taking advantage of Even shaitan would whisper, or oh, if you do that, they will think that you're, uh, you're trying to take advantage of them or this or that. Don't worry about these whispers of shaitan to try to bring peace with those who we have disputes with for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we get our deeds accepted. Uh, and Sheikh, I, I would like for you to just highlight... Uh, uh, not just friends and family, but unfortunately nowadays we find even people not talking to their own mother and their own fathers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are on the doorsteps of Ramadan. Can I ask you to just talk about the very serious issue of us connecting back with our mothers and fathers? Uh, this is a very sad thing and it's a very evil thing uh, when a person is not able to see the ones that have so much favors on them 
and instead of returning the favors with goodness they return it with evil uh, if there's no evidence in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ whatsoever that talks about how virtue and good we should be to our parents it should be sufficient for the person just for the fact that this is a mother and a father that they were the reason for that person to exist in life they did not create him but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them the means for one's existence so there's nobody on the face of earth have more rights on us after uh, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rights of the Prophet ﷺ and so on than our parents even if they were not good in raising us and so on, it doesn't matter, this is irrelevant. And you add to this that this is the order of Allah. Okay. There's no goodness in one's life if he's not uh, taking care of one's parents. Okay. So it's a duty and it's something that a person should do with sincere intentions. Otherwise, what's the benefit of, of doing all of these good deeds when a person is not doing the same to the closest one to oneself? Uh, and it's amazing, Sheikh, that uh, if, how a person can abstain from his mother and his father when Allah in the Quran, He says, Wala taqul lahuma uf. Don't even say uff, let alone disconnect it with them. Right, and it's, there's no re really even goodness in, in one's worldly gain uh, if there's no good connection with one's parents. And, as, and that's why if a person sees in his life there's so much disturbances, he's not even made, able to do matters of provisions, right? Uh, he need to review again the relationship between him and his mother, especially, and the parents in large. And Sheikh, uh, it, it's sad, but the reality is that one will not really appreciate his mother uh, or his father until one of them is lifted and, and taken to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the person really will cry and, and miss the two. And in the Day of Judgment, the regret is even far more. And if a person, one of his parents are alive, especially when they're old in age, and if they don't make him enter Jannah, as the Prophet ﷺ said, mm -hmm. and he mentioned that in the context of Ramadan. Oh, yes. The Prophet ﷺ was going uh, to the mimbar, taking one step after another, and uh, he said, Ameen, 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 three times. So the people asked the Prophet ﷺ, we saw you saying Ameen for what? Then he said, والسلام, that Jibreel ﷺ came to the Prophet ﷺ and he told them three things, one of which is, his, a person's uh, nose is rubbed in the ground, that means a sign of humiliation. If he witnessed the, mother, the month of Ramadan and his sins are not forgiven, he's, he's a loser right? because of the many means of forgiveness. And the other one, he is humiliated, the one that witnessed one of his parents at old age and they do not make him enter Jannah because it was so easy for that person to enter Jannah if he's kind to them. But he missed such a great opportunity. SubhanAllah. Uh, Shaykh also we want to look at another way to prepare for Ramadan uh, is to empty out our hearts take away things that make us busy take away things that keep us occupied how important is it that we empty our hearts and just keep it purely for Ramadan now, uh, this is one of the things that is distractions whenever we are in Salah we will find distractions and the distractions is usually worldly things work, stresses, relationships whatever there is and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us if we focus at the time of ibadah, the time of worship, in this worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of our needs outside of that worship. And that's a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the hearts of the believers. You're concerned about whatever there is in this life, the time for the salah comes. Put that aside. Okay. For these minutes that you make your salah, make your heart present, and only focus on that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of your needs. The same thing, the month of Ramadan is coming. Focus on the month of Ramadan and preparing oneself and emptying our hearts from all of these distractions. Prepare, make a plan, and that's part of preparation for Ramadan. Uh, with the family, sitting together, how are we going to be prepared for Ramadan? Uh, what are our schedule in Ramadan? Uh, making sure that we fast in the right way, the taraweeh, the night prayer in the masjid, the iftar, feeding uh, the poor. People prepare for evil things before the month of Ramadan. Those who would spread all kinds of corruptions and and, 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 these and all of these types of things. You know, the believers, they need same in matters of goodness, preparing themselves for Ramadan. How many poor people will, will, will help them to break their fast and family together and raising the children to observe the importance of the month of Ramadan. Are we among those who would just uh, bring our children to observe the importance of this life only? If it's time for the exam, Everybody is focused on this. The whole household is on one thing, to get this child to go to the exam. Yeah. Right? How about the month of Ramadan? To go to Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to protect them from the hellfire. So making, making a plan, preparing oneself for this, this is part of emptying our hearts from being focused on materialistic things and put it in perspective. We're not saying to ignore it, but what's the priority in our life?
okay. is the deen. The deen is the thing that we would spend the time and sacrifice and efforts and everything is for the sake of Allah, for the deen of Islam. Uh, and Sheikh, when we talk about emptying our hearts uh, or, or distractions, uh, it's obvious that uh, we have to abstain ourselves from that which is haram. This is a natural thing. But even those things which is mubah, things that we are allowed to do, we should even refrain from that. And one example I would, I would like for you to highlight is the use, for example, of the internet. I mean, uh, everybody now is addicted to the f to the Facebooks or Twitter or Instagram, whatever they're using. For the month of Ramadan, what would you recommend for the youngsters who are heavily using the internet? Uh, this is one of the fit and the trials that we face nowadays. And we have to uh, face the reality of it. And it's not about haram and halal only. You know, if you put aside that the fact that there's so much haram out there and sinful acts done, which is a very evil thing, especially in the months of Ramadan and so on. And it's very easy for a person to break even his fast during the day of Ramadan when indulging in haram. Uh, if, the, if we put this aside, it's enough also for the matters that are permissible. There is so much waste for one's, of one's time. If we read the, the stories of the early generations of Islam, what did they used to do in Ramadan is amazing. Uh, you know, in its authentic narration, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah used to finish the recitation of the Quran in Ramadan 60 times. SubhanAllah. Although this is against what the hadith of the <laughs> Prophet ﷺ said, do not finish the Quran in less than three days. But as the ulama, they say, this is a blessed time. So when it's a blessed time, it's okay for a person to do that, but especially for a person of knowledge, a person that perfected the recitation of the Qur'an, it's easier for him. We're not saying to recite without understanding the meaning of things, but they know the, the value of time. And as one said, then, uh, you know, it's a very interesting quote from someone recent. He was saying that he used to be amazed of reading of how the early generations of Islam used to read Qur'an and have the time to finish the Qur'an. He said, my amazing feeling went away when I saw how people are attached to their phones. And if we, uh, the, if we look at the Qur'an and open the Mus'haf and read Qur'an during the month of Ramadan, the same amount of time that we do with our phones and our things like this, we will finish the Qur'an many times and would affect our hearts. And again, the point is not just finishing the recitation, but to have that effect, to be concerned of what is more benefiting to us and what's going to affect us in the Day of Judgment. And it's very simple. As Muslims, we need to always think in anything that we do, what is that going to benefit me in the hereafter? Okay. If there's a benefit, mashallah, that's based on knowledge. If there's no benefit and there's something else, there's more benefiting, then that's what matters. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, and he was the imam of the dunya at this time. Okay. And he would teach people the hadith of the Prophet mm -hmm. There's nothing more virtue than teaching people. Whenever the month of Ramadan comes, he would quit and stop teaching. Why? He's not just relaxing in the month of Ramadan. This is not the break vacation for him. This is the time to reflect upon oneself. And he would do the personal ibadah and focus on one's ibadah and worship of Allah and reciting the Qur'an. So even that is something to be done. So you can imagine then when it's not like the same of what Imam Malik used to do. SubhanAllah. Putting the sunnah, I wouldn't say aside, but putting it uh, to the side just in, for the preparation of the reading of the Holy Qur'an. No. Uh, Shaykh, also, another way to prepare, especially for the men, uh, is to get more accustomed to the masjid. Uh, I mean, the, the men generally should be praying in the masjid anyway, but to stay there for longer. So, for example, you pray a fajr pray, stay there until shuruq, until sunrise, mm. uh, and make a thqar just like the way the Prophet Sallallahu would do, or just have a meeting or a lesson, or, but just get accustomed to the masjid. Would that be preparation? Right, and that's what we would find, again, as we said, we need to struggle and there's nothing wrong with struggling and striving. It's only 30 days, but it's a life-changing 30 days. So we do that before even the month of Ramadan, but setting a schedule. Pray Fajr in the masjid, stay the masjid to sunrise. It's not mandatory to stay to sunrise, but why not putting the effort there to, to make dhikr, as you said, as the Prophet ﷺ used to do. This is the breakfast, this is the nutrition of the whole day. As Shaykh al-Sain Tamir rahimahullah, he said, this is ghadwati, this is my nutrition. I cannot go into my day without this nutrition. Mm. People don't go out without breakfast. Our breakfast is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to say what the Prophet ﷺ used to say at this time. The same thing with praying every salah in the masjid. Uh, praying maghrib in the masjid. Praying salatul isha and the taraweeh prayer. And you would find shaitan whispering to people before even the month of Ramadan, preparing all kinds of distractions at the time of salah at night. We find people not going to the masjid, but instead watching television or watching haram things. You know, go to the masjid and pray. It's a long prayer, my foot hurts and so on. If you're standing with a loved one, you would stand for a long time. Right? And that's why when we feel the, the pain or it's not you know, something that is enjoyable, because our heart is, is not pure enough.
Okay. Uh, but so what? Struggle. We will, there is a day we will stand, and that day people will stand for 50,000 years in the Day of Judgment. So standing in the prayer, seeking rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us in the Day of Judgment is something that is uh, worthy of doing, especially that we are helped to do that in just counted days. Okay, excellent. Uh, Sheikh, one more thing before we uh, read out some of the answers from our question of the week and talk about the homework as well. Uh, Sheikh, uh, you know, if, you, if one is blessed in doing Umrah, uh, in the month of Ramadan and uh, the time of opening the fast comes you'll find people grabbing your arms and your legs and wanting to feed you mm. um, can I ask you just very quickly to talk about the importance of wanting to feed people or wanting to open their fasts yeah. the Prophet Ali Sallallahu he made that clear that whoever uh, give food for someone to break his fast he would get the same reward of fasting of that person without diminishing the fasting reward of that person so that's why the Muslims, they compete with one another. You can fast and you do this act of worship, beautiful act of worship, and you get a lot of reward, unlimited reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but that's only you. But if you help, if you feed others at the moment of breaking the fast, you're not just getting the reward of your fasting, you're getting the reward of that person's fasting and that person's fasting and so on, and they would not get less because they're, you're not taking anything from them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a competition and it should not be limited just to the locality of the person. We have the entire world for a person to help and it's just a matter of feeding others. But speci especially, this is something that you would never f see in the whole entire world except in the Muslim world. People at Maghrib time competing to feed one another, feeding, feeding strangers, you know, all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, excellent. Sheikh, uh, let us move over to the question of the week. And then we can come back if uh, we have some, some time to keep going. Uh, dear viewers, our question from last week um, was, in which verse of the Qur'an did the Prophet ﷺ tell us that the believers will see Allah in paradise? So let's get the correct answer from the Sheikh. And then uh, let me read that question again. And uh, in which verse of the Qur'an did the Prophet ﷺ tell us that we will see, or the believers, should I say, will see Allah uh, in paradise. That's the question. Phone lines are open as well. You're more than welcome to give us your comments, your questions, your thoughts, anything you like. They're open. And the numbers are there on your screen as well. But because of time, uh, Sheikh, so which verse was that and uh, what does it mean? Now, there are many verses in the Quran that talks about seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Day of Judgment. But that specific question was the Prophet said something about a verse. And that was in Surah Yunus, uh, ayah number 36. Surah Yunus is uh, Surah number 10. Verse number 36, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَدٍ okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, for the believers, for those who did good, they will have goodness and more. Ziyada is more. So what is more means? The Prophet sallallahu he's the one that made the tafsir of this ayah by saying that al-husna is jannah, and ziyada or the more is for the believers when they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So mashallah, Shaykh, you're giving uh, tough questions. People oh, no, <laughs> having to do lots of research. Allah, okay, yeah. so let's read the questions. And uh, if we can ask for the answers to be put on the screen as well, so everybody can see. Let us begin from the top. Um, the very first response we had from, was from Sister uh, Mary Oli, and she responds by saying, uh, some faces that day shall be now there are shining and radiant looking at the Lord and that comes from Surah Al-Qiyamah 75 verse 22 and 23 you can see there on your screen is the very first answer um, the, I think uh, the, the verse mashallah, is talking about the faces but in the context uh, it is not the correct answer is it Sheikh? Right, but uh, out of you know it's, yeah it's, it's, the, uh, it's not it's not a good, but still, is talking yes, it's about an that evidence of the, that yeah. people would see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so this is an evidence of seeing Allah, but it's not the exact one that the Prophet Sallallahu was speaking about. But well done, Sister Mary. Um, and then we have Sister uh, Amina Muhammad Abdullahi, and she writes chapter 10, verse 26. I think she means verse 36, but she says, For those who have done good uh, in the best place which is paradise and even more which I think is the ziyada having the honor of grace gl glancing at the uh, countenance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that would be would be correct Sheikh? yeah inshallah maybe okay. I made the mistake I'm not sure maybe you can check is it 26 or 36 sometimes the 2 and the 3 maybe I but it's the, it's the right verse because you get the verse translated okay. right okay so the number is not important but her, the content right. is, is right. correct so sister Amina correct answer and then sister Halima Muhammad Abdullahi uh, the third person there also responds with the same Lilladin Ahsanu and Husna was Ziyada. So that is also correct. So well done, Sister Halima. Well done, Sister Amina with the correct answer. And also, Sister Mary Oli, uh, well done. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all three of you and again sheikh i have noticed that uh, they're all sisters mm. and we have yet to see a brother give us an answer let alone a correct answer mm. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy i think the, i think the sisters are, are going to revive the ummah not the Allah brothers Allah. <laughs> Allah make it easy. okay so thank you very much uh, sisters for your contribution there and let me also make mention of our homework the tutorials from the last week we had mashallah up to okay so the verse was 26 uh, there is a correction there so the sister was right uh, 26 yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's good so that's all right thank you very much for that correction and also we go back to our tutorials and uh, there was a good 15 questions given on last week's uh, uh, homework and last week's discussion and mashallah we had a number of people contribute and answer those questions they weren't easy and two people got those questions right not just right but they actually got them a hundred percent and uh, it's one sister doesn't want her name to be mentioned so I'm not going to say her name is going to remain anonymous so well done sister for for that and the second sister also who got uh, all the questions correct was sister Asma Saeed who is from Egypt uh, studying at Al Azhar University and uh, Sheikh, could I ask you just very quickly to just give an appreciation to both of those sisters and these three sisters as well? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and make them uh, blessed with this knowledge and to uh, extend their benefits to others and teach others what they learn. And, and that's what we definitely need, mashallah. Okay, excellent. Uh, so we're just about to conclude the program, but before we go, we must give you the homework. So, Sheikh, uh, am I going to do it? Yeah, <laughs> no? you okay. Do it, Dear viewers, the question for this week, which will be put up on our Facebook page is in which year was the fasting made obligatory you can see the question there on your screens so do answer that on our Facebook page in which year was the fasting made uh, obligatory dear viewers I'd like to thank everybody deeply especially those who are answering our question doing the homeworks you are working very hard and also the Sheikh Masha I'd like to thank you very much Sheikh you're Sakhma. always uh, with us answering our questions uh, I, we appreciate it very much Sheikh. thank you very much uh, so dear viewers as we ma made mention in the beginning this is the last live program of gems of the heart until after Ramadan inshallah we will resume straight after Ramadan but don't worry the tutorials will be running and we'll be talking about the purification of the soul some material will be given to you for you to read and for you to answer the questions so do stay engaged with us on that program and on that I'd like to thank everybody very much uh, for being in tune with us I'd like to thank the Huda team to make this fantastic program gems of the heart possible all those sitting behind the cameras and all those sitting upstairs as well we thank you very much for that and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you a blessed Ramadan a beautiful Ramadan one that we all benefit and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with on that note I'd like to conclude thank you very much assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh